Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back to another video. If you've been keeping up with my channel, you'll know that last week I sort of talked you through the process of me essentially rebuilding my entire comic small business from the ground up, which involved getting new branding in, new logos, banners, um, designing new business cards, flyers for Patreon, and talking you through sort of the new products that I'm doing as my art style has evolved over the last year. And event season for me is just around the corner. This weekend I'm doing two uh, art markets, one at Meanwood in Leeds and then another at the Corn Exchange in Leeds City Centre. And I figured that with the rebrand sort of going on slash being done, that the next thing to do would be to sort of redo my table display as well and do something a little bit different to what I have been doing over the past year to to really reflect these changes that I've been making sort of since the new year and trying to make my display a little bit more elevated and immersive for customers. So in today's video, I'm just gonna be showing you the process of me making those changes to the table display whilst offering you guys some advice and tips as well if you're thinking about attending conventions or markets on how you can display your products to really get the best out of that market as well. So what I start with when I do my table displays is you've already got the table set up, you've got your cloth covering the table. The first thing that I do is set up the background or backdrops, whatever you wanna call them. And for that, I use these mesh grid panels. Now, I use these to hang prints from and other things like pins and if you've got like mystery bags that you can hang up as well on hooks, then these grids are perfect for that. Another alternative that you can use is essentially the plastic version of that. They are considerably smaller, but they are also a lot lighter. So if you are traveling to events, depending on sort of what stock you take, it might be something to bear in mind that the metal grids are quite heavy, especially if you take a few of them like I do. So that's just something to bear in mind. The great thing about these cubes is that the connectors for the corners where they join, they have eight different sockets where you can plug the adjoining grid to. So you can really get creative and make sort of, to an extent, different shapes. Uh, obviously only really square, but as you can see, I've used one half to basically create a corner where I can hang all the prints. And the other half, I have created a cube and then with other panels going around it. Now with the cube, this is something that I would recommend because when you're at events, you will find that you have very little space to deal with. So I haven't put a back on the cube. Reason being for that is that I've now got a little nook that I can uh, keep my notepad where I record sales. I can keep business cards, um, flyers and, and bags and things like that. So when a customer does order, uh, purchase something, everything's just there and I'm not sort of fumbling around behind the table trying to find everything and put it together. On the topic of prints as well, another thing that I really, really recommend is these little, uh, I think they are called like knitting hooks or, or crocheting hooks, some, something like that. Um, but they are quite strong. Uh, in the past, I've been using like little wooden pegs to hang things up and from my experience, although they are, you could argue, quite aesthetic and, and nice to look at, they're extremely weak and it doesn't take much to make them snap. So these little clips are really strong and if you're hanging prints that are not necessarily heavy, but depending on if it's an outdoor market, obviously you've got to take into account the elements and, and wind can knock it and things like that. These do sort of stand their ground and keep everything hung up. And depending on what sort of prints you do as well and the shape of prints, I only 
stick to A4 and A5, mainly A5. <clears throat> but if they're landscape or portrait, then you can get quite creative and hang them sort of in, in different patterns, if you like, and just try and make it as immersive as you can. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be showing you sort of how to create different levels, if you like. So there's, nothing's really flat, everything's sort of at different levels throughout the table. And I find that that makes the shopping experience for the customer a lot more immersive. And hanging the prints all around the background, it just makes it, your table look nice and, and sort of stand out, especially if you do work like mine that's quite colourful and bold, then you can really see that from a distance. Now, as I mentioned with the hooks, you can get these on Amazon for, for just a couple of quid. And if you have things like uh, sticker bags or anything really that you can punch a hole into and hook on, then I really recommend these because again, they can create quite an immersive sort of shopping experience and again it keeps everything sort of at different levels and not everything is flat. Now not everyone will do this, obviously I create comics and with comics comes original artwork, pages that I've sketched out before actually producing the comic on the iPad and a lot of comic creators do like to sell these. Uh, it's a nice opportunity for fans of your comics to get like an original piece of artwork and almost a bit of history to the comics that they love to read. So I've got these, so I've got these little wooden um, display ramps, if you want to call them that. I think they were actually advertised as plate racks uh, for the kitchen that you would just stack plates on but it also works perfectly for these original prints as well. I didn't want to hang them up with my other regular prints because these are a little bit more special and sort of their own separate category if you like two prints it falls under original artwork so i've displayed these again you'll notice that it goes up and is sort of more elevated towards the back than what it is the front so that allows people to see every print rather than it just being sort of in a basket where they would have to sort of flip through. I have used baskets in the past and what I found is that people seem quite reluctant to, to sort of reach in and, and really have a flip through. Obviously that doesn't go for everyone but in my experience the vast majority of people don't like to, to rifle through your table, they would just rather sort of have a look and then make an informed decision from there. So making sure everything is visible and creating those different levels is really essential to get him, to draw in people in and getting them to have a proper look at your artwork. Now, I know I've just said that baskets are not that great, um, but I am using one for my sale prints and mystery print bags, just because it works, given the space I've got on the table and the, the room that I've got to work with. I'm not saying that the sale stuff isn't important, but at the end of the day, you go to markets and, and conventions to make money. So if it means that the more expensive original artwork is more visible and people will have to rifle through the sale stuff, then so be it, in my opinion. I also find that if stuff is on the sale, people do like a bargain. So the incentive to actually flip through that is more than what it would be for some expensive original artwork. I also sell pin badges. Now, last year I used to have my pins on a backing card. I would punch a hole through the top and have them hooked on those metal hooks that I showed you earlier. And what I found is that usually through sort of transportation, if you do a lot of events like me and you're sort of constantly going from one market or convention to another. Through no fault of your own, stuff can just get damaged and the backing cards would constantly sort of bend, uh, they would have creases, even get torn. And <clears throat> when you're displaying stuff, it's, it's just not a good look. You want stuff to look nice and not sort of beat up. So this year, I'm completely scrapping that idea and I found an old 
mini frame that no longer had a picture in. I've taken the glass and the frame off of it and you're just left with the cardboard at the back with a stand. So I've just used my Posca pens to hand draw that this is what where the pins are, the price, and then the cardboard is sort of weak enough so that you can punch the pins through, but strong enough to actually stand up as well. Now, I did have the original idea to actually hang these like I did the prints, um, but obviously I just ran out of space, so I've left that freestanding, and luckily enough, there was a gap there that was the perfect size. Now, I also do mini comics and mystery bags of those mini comics. Now, they don't take up a lot of space, and it's not like my my regular comics where there's just one display copy out and then I keep the rest with me. Um, I, I just have them all out just for the sake of ease really, for, for myself and, and storage behind the table. So I've got these little mini trays, again you can get these on Amazon very cheap and they are the perfect size to hold these mini comics and again it's just nice to to have a different sort of display method rather than just keeping everything flat like my regular comics and I've pushed these further back as well because I want the main focus of my table to be my main proper comics that are laid out on the front of the table so as you approach the first thing that you will see on the table is the comics that I've released because that is what I want to sell the most of and that is what I want people to, to sort of flip through and read. I've also got some comics where I've hand-drawn original alternative covers on. Again, they're quite special, so I've kept them in between the comics and the original artwork, because obviously it crosses both borders, and it's quite a nice segue from comics to hand-drawn comics to hand-drawn artwork. And then there's just a few other comics that I'm down to the last copies of and I won't be restocking, so rather than just discontinuing them, I've put them out on the table. You never know if someone might just want a random issue, so they're just there with a label saying how many copies are left, and hopefully people will pick them up and then that'll just free a bit of space for me. I'll make a little bit of money and it's, it's just better than discontinuing them and putting them into storage. And the final thing that really pulls the table together and completes it is the sticker display that is bang in the center. Now I've used the plastic grids that I showed you at the start of this video, connecting two together to actually create the board to display the stickers on, and then one going through the middle on the back so it creates sort of a, a pyramid shape and again elevates it and creates that different level and that's front and center and stickers are some of my best sellers so people will be drawn to that first and can have and this is a full look at my table the only thing that is missing is the t-shirts that i released last year to celebrate one year of me writing comics full time and a banner sort of displaying who i am and i've decided just not to put those up because they're just going to be hung on the front of the table so this was just really a practice run and there was no need for me to do that because it's not competing for space because it's hung on the front whereas stuff on the actual table I have to sort of think about and sort of move around and you will find that when you do your table display you will be moving things around quite a lot just trying to figure out what works best where uh, what looks good where and just creating an, an effective and an inviting display. Um, so yeah, compared to last year, last year's tables were very chaotic. I didn't have sort of a set structure and every event that I did, it changed in some way or another. And this display I think is much better. It's also a little bit uh, reduced if you like, so that saves me a lot of stress and time sort of faffing around setting it up. And now that I've got this sort of fixed structure of what I want it to be, just take a picture and then when you go to an event 
load it up on your phone and then just look at it for reference and you can sort of replicate it each time. But all in all, I'm really happy with this display and I hope you guys like it too. If you do like this table display, give the video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. If you found these tips useful, if you are a fellow creative, then let me know. And if you do have any tips of your own, leave them in the comments below as well and let's help as many creatives as we can. If you really enjoyed this video as well, please subscribe to the channel as we do videos weekly and next week I will be vlogging the markets that I'm doing this weekend so you can see the new display in action and if you really really like what we do then you can join our call on Patreon. We post three times a week and have tiers starting from just £1 a month as just a general support tier so it's not very much money at all and Patreon is the best way for a small artist like myself to earn a stable income and it really does mean the world. Each tier also offers a seven day free trial so you can sign up, have a look back through the last year and a half's worth of exclusive content, get the exclusive rewards that I offer to Patreon members, and after that week, if it's not for you, you can just unsubscribe and you've not lost any money, or you can keep subscribing and just help me feed all four cats. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Thanks guys!